Welcome to the second episode of how celebrities get in shape. We'll take a look at what these guys are doing to achieve such extraordinary results. Maybe even criticize them a little bit. Here we go. Let's see how Chris Pratt completely transformed himself. Transforming yourself is really not hard. You just it requires consistency and dedication and and you have to be willing to sacrifice the things that you want. You have to trade things that are fun like alcohol consumption, meals at restaurants, things like that. I agree, you have to know what you want and you have to be willing to do the things required to turn that into reality. I just don't see why eating at the restaurants would be a problem. I was capable of doing it, I think anybody could do it if they wanted to, but uh, unless you had to, I don't see why you yeah. want to. You're now, why would you want to be healthy, strong, good-looking, confident individual? Why not just you know, stay fat, feel like shit, die younger, things like that. <laughs> Chris Pratt eats no fat, is that true? No, I eat, I eat plenty of fat, I eat plenty of fat. Yes. Chris Pratt eats no sugar. Well, maybe that's why you don't like to be in shape, Chris. I would also be pretty damn depressed if I had no sugar. We should all know by now that sugar has nothing to do with weight loss. It's about the calories, and the last time I checked, fat has more than double the amount of calories compared to sugar. Imagine if you actually ate more sugar and less fat. Your life would probably be much sweeter to say the least. Say, what do you do for cardio? <laughs> no cardio? Uh, no, I run. <laughs> That's See? a savory answer. Yeah, so what is the real answer? You I think they get it. I think Henry is one of the rare actors who really know what he's doing. He can obviously get away without doing cardio simply by adjusting his diet. Sure, cardio is great for health, but not necessary, not even if you want to look like a freaking Superman. It's a very long and complicated process with a lot of knowledge required to achieve the thing. Um, that's why we have our trainers who do all that and just tell us what to do and tell us what to eat. I would say as far as a tip of the person who's being trained is when it starts to hurt badly and you want to quit, that's really when you shouldn't quit. Yeah, unless you're able to push through that burning discomfort, you'll just get stuck at a certain point. Unless you're a complete beginner, you have to train hard. There's really no way around it. I was committed to getting as big as possible, lifting as heavy as possible, and eating 10 to 12 meals a day. And, you know, I drink two or three mass gainer shakes a day and uh, my calorie intake was, was, was pretty damn high. <laughs> and my gas was horrible. We'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely overdoing it. No need to eat more than five protein meals per day. That's what's gonna give you maximum result with the muscle gain and will enable you to use all the opportunities for the protein synthesis to occur 99.9% .9 of the people are just gonna get fat eating 10 to 12 meals per day. I was just stuffing my face all day long and lifting heavy weights and eating more. And I just listened to what he said about get as big as you possibly can. So that's what I did, you know? But I was kind of like a bear. I wasn't really like a martial arts, you know, guy all lean and ripped and everything like that. I could see the look on Chris's face, you know, he looked at me and it was like, oh Christ, you know, what has this guy done? It was a moment of panic where I realized, oh crap, you know, I took Chris at his exact word about get as big as you can, but he didn't really think I was going to get that big. And a number of the crew I'd worked with on previous movies, they looked at me and they were like, uh, Bloody hell, Chris, what are we doing here? Fat man or bat fan? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You can't just go on and do the dirty bath thing and eat five to 6,000 calories like most of the actors do. You're just gonna get fat. You can actually calculate that very precisely. Here's how many calories you need to eat to gain 10 pounds of muscle in one year, which is the maximum that you can naturally build as a beginner. So one pound equals 3,500 calories, 10 pounds equals 35,000 calories, divide that by 365 days, which is how many days there is in one year, and Boom, you have to be almost 100 calories in surplus every day 
to build 10 pounds of muscle in one year. That's how to build lean muscle without gaining fat. It's simple math. Now, what's going to happen if your caloric surplus is higher than that? You'll be gaining unnecessary amounts of fat. That's all there is to it. I have found over the years that the best strategies are often the ones that you never feel like you're hungry. There's a handful of chefs who I work with and I have one advisory chef who speaks to them, who works very closely with my strength and conditioning coach because I am in different locations often throughout the year around the world. So they work out all that math. They're much better and smarter at that than I am. Obviously, it's impossible to stay on the diet if you're feeling hungry. So for all of us who don't have private chefs, how can we stick to the diet without feeling hungry? There are three main things. First is eating mainly low calorie dense foods that will allow you to have huge portion sizes for the lower amounts of calories. Second is eating lots of fiber because fiber keeps you satiated for longer. And three is more protein, which also helps you stay full. Combine these three things and you will lose weight effortlessly. I usually eat the same thing every day for days and weeks <laughs> and months. It's very consistent. It's very boring. It's also extremely disciplined. And that's something that I picked up from my old man who was a, a hardcore gym fanatic. He was one of the first professional wrestlers who had a bodybuilder's body. So he taught me very early on not to eat to please the tongue, but eat to nourish the body. I actually like that. Although my clients are eating delicious foods that they enjoy, you know, because it helps them easily stick to their diet. I personally look at food as fuel. That's it. I just make sure that I eat right amounts of nutrients and that it doesn't cost me much time to do that. Your time is always most valuable asset. If you're broke, if you're not a millionaire, the last thing you should be doing with your time is cooking. I can't think of a lower ROI activity than walking to the fridge, getting out some ingredients. Ooh, an onion. Well, let me get the onion. I'm gonna start cooking. Fridge, ooh, an onion and some lettuce. Now, get my, get my knife, cut my onion, start to cut my onion. You're broke! <laughs> You're fucking <laughs> poor! You can order, you can get rotisserie chicken for five bucks. Boom, chicken, bang, eat, bang, back to work. Yeah, man, 100%, you can meal prep for the entire week. That way you save a lot of time. You also have plenty of recipes that don't require much time for you to prepare. You can order food and have it come to your doors. I agree with Andrew on this 100%. What is the ratio of attention that you get from guys versus girls? Oh, like 90-10. <laughs> In favor of men, of course. <laughs> Literally. And I think my Instagram statistics are like 91% men. <laughs> yeah. But listen... In this case, he has more than 2 million women following him. So it's not that bad when you think about it that way. Not bad at all. Let me know if you enjoyed today's episode. Here you can watch the previous one. Subscribe for more and see you there. Bye bye.